All right, in this problem, we'll solve the 2017 AMC 10A problem number 11. The region consisting of all points in three-dimensional space within three units of line segment AB has volume 216 pi. What is the length AB? Okay, so how are we going to visualize this? It's kind of hard to draw something 3D that all points within uh, three units. Uh, let's think about a line going straight back into the board of which this is like you're looking straight down into it like that. If you were within three units of this point, then you would form a circle that has a radius of three, right? And you can imagine this extending off the board this way. This could be point A, right? And B would be somewhere out here to give you what's kind of like a cylinder. Well, it is a cylinder. And then many people might just think that's the end of it, right? It's just a cylinder. But you actually have to think about the end cap, right? If I flip this around, the end cap is going to be a hemisphere, right? On both ends of our cylinder, like a big pill, perhaps. And so uh, we need to calculate the cylinder plus the end caps. So the cylinder is. Uh, area of the base times the height. The base is a circle with radius 3. Um, so it's pi r squared times h. That's plug in 3 to get 9 pi. The height is the length of AB, and that's what we're looking for. So we aren't going to know it right now. We'll just put 9 pi h. Plus the two hemispheres, which combined make a sphere of radius 3. You're going to need the volume of a sphere formula. That's 4 thirds pi r cubed. Incidentally, um, a good way to memorize whether you're thinking of the volume formula or the surface area formula is that the surface area of a sphere is simply the derivative of the volume. So if you multiply by 3, you get 3 over 3 cancels, 4 pi r, and subtract 1 to get squared. Not to mention, area is associated with two dimensions, and volume is associated with three dimensions. So it's going to connect to that in that way. So we're going to add 4 thirds pi. R again is 3 um, cubed. So now this 3 will cancel one of those powers. I'm going to get 9 times 4 is 36. So 9 pi h plus 36 pi equals 216 pi. If you subtract 36, you'll get 9 pi h equals 180 pi. Divide by 9 pi to get h equals 20. All right, now we'll solve the 2017 AMC 10A problem number 12. Let s be the set of points x, y in the coordinate plane such that two of the three quantities, 3, x plus 2, and y minus 4 are equal, and the third of the three quantities is no greater than this common value. Which of the following is a correct description of s? I don't advise looking at the answers. They're not really going to help you. I would just start working with what they say. So it says two of the three are equal. Just grab the first two and start going. Three equals x plus two, so x equals one. And the third, which would be y minus four, is no greater than this common value. Be careful not to put one right here. It's not one, it's actually three. Three is the common value for this expression and this expression. So it's this and you get y is less than or equal to 7 but x is equal to 1. We can graph that. x equals 1 is a vertical line through x equals 1 on the x-axis. We'll say 7 is about right here. I can't go any higher than that. This is a range restriction. So we're going to be going straight down like this. Next up, let's just do 3 equal to y minus 4 because these two are easier. I'll move 4 over to get y equals 7, and again, the third expression, which is the one we didn't use, x plus 2, is less than or equal to 3, which means x is less than or equal to 1. 
Again, y equals 7 is a horizontal line. I start here. I have a domain restriction. I have to go only back this way. Okay, next up, we say y minus 4 equals x plus 2. We move the 4 over to get x plus 6. We also say that 3 is no greater than, which is less than or equal to, y minus 4. If I move the 4 over, I'll get y is greater than or equal to 7. In addition, 3 is less than or equal to x plus 2, and x is greater than or equal to 1. So again, start at the point 1, 7, which is right here, and my slope of my line is 1 for y equals x plus 6, so it's coming out like this, and actually, it points right at the answer. E, 3 rays with the common endpoint. Okay, and now we will do the 2017 AMC 10A, problem 13. Define a sequence recursively, that means by looking back, by f of 0, f sub 0 equals 0, f sub 1 equals 1, looking back at previous terms. And f sub n is equal to the remainder when f sub n minus 1 plus f sub n minus 2 is divided by 3 for all n greater than or equal to 2. Thus the sequence starts. Ignore what they tell us about how it starts for a second. Try to make sense of what they've said. Many people panic when they start seeing subscripts and sequences and recursively and they get a little worried about if they're going to be able to do it. The secret is just to start plugging in values for n. So for example, uh, when you see this, by the way, don't think of this as f sub n minus 1 like I actually read it. Think of it as the previous term plus the second previous term. That's easier to think about. So we know the sequence starts 0, 1, because it tells us f of 0 sub 0 is 0, and f sub 1 is 1. So I need the sum of these two terms. The, the next term is this, the remainder when the previous two terms sum is divided by 3. Well, if I add these, I get 1. When I divide by 3, I'm going to get a remainder of 1. Let's keep going and see if ours matches what they tell us. If I take the next term, right, n for being 4 now, this was when n was 2, f sub 2, so n, n being the 2 is greater than or equal to 2. So we try the next one, f of 3. It's again the previous two terms. Why? Because if I plug the 3 into the little n, I'll get f sub 3 minus 1 plus f sub 3 minus 2. Simplify that, it's f sub 2 plus f sub 1. In other words, the previous two terms. We don't want to be plugging in n anymore. We want to just think about the sum of the previous two terms. So once we understand that reality, we're now just going to continue. 1 plus 1 is 2, divided by 3, remainder is 2. Add these, divide by 3, the remainder is 0. Add these, the remainder is 2. Add these, a the remainder of 2 again. Add these is 4, you went over 3 by 1, so the remainder is 1, the remainder is 0, the remainder is 1, and 0 plus 1, remainder is 1. We're looking to get a little ways out as quickly as possible so that we can look for a pattern to emerge. In this case, a repeated pattern. So, first off, we match up here. 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 2. 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 2. We're on the right track. Always check yourself as you go so that you're not making some casual error and you end up with a silly. Okay, so we've got 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 2, 2, 1, 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 1 matches 0, 1, 1. Therefore, all the way to here is our repeated portion. This is going to repeat because it's doing the same thing these terms were doing. So how many terms are in our repeated portion? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So every eighth term will be this one right here. Okay, so then we want to start up at f of 2017. So right after the 2016th term, let's think about that term then. Since 2000 itself is 8 times 250, and 16 is 8 times 2, we know that 8 goes into this, and therefore, this would be the 2016th term. So to start the 2017th term, I'm just going to start right here at the 0. Now all we have to do is count the number of terms we want. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
6, 7, 8. You could have also taken this, subtracted that, and added 1. We want the sum of the next 8 terms, starting with this one, which is simply the sum of one cycle. Add it up, 4 and 5 is 9, and the answer is D. And next we're on to the 2017 AMC 10A problem 14. Every week, Roger pays for a movie ticket and a soda out of his allowance. Last week, Roger's allowance was a dollars. The cost of his movie ticket, which we will call M, was 20%. So make sense of it as you go is a good idea. Don't just read the whole thing, then you have to go back and reprocess again, when right now you can think about it as you go. So we're going to make M the cost of the movie ticket. It says it was 20% of, so it is equal to one-fifth of what? The difference between the allowance and the cost of his soda, which we're going to call D. I don't really like S because it looks like 5, so I try not to use it whenever possible. So then we're going to have A minus D. That's the difference between his allowance and the soda. Okay, next up it says, while the cost of his soda, which we're calling D, was 5% or 1 20th of the difference between A and the cost of his movie ticket, which is M. Finally, it's going to ask us, to the nearest whole percent, what fraction of A, so make a fraction with A on the bottom, did Roger pay for his movie ticket plus his soda? So we want this to be equal to P over 100, because it's, it's asking what percent, basically, and that would be written as P over 100. Okay, uh, what's next? Just start manipulating. Don't distribute one-fifth. Nobody likes fractions. Get rid of it. Multiply by 5. 5M equals A minus D. Over here times 20. 20D 20 equals A minus M. Okay, then what? Well, we probably should play around with the numbers some. We've got an A here and an A here, and it's easily solved for. Let's solve it and set it equal and see what happens. A will equal 5M plus D, which will also equal 20D plus M, because the M becomes positive. Next up, let's solve for D in terms of M or M in terms of D. We'll move the M over here to get for M and the D over here to get 19D. Divide by 4 to get M equals 19 over 4D. Let's go back over to here now. Why? Because we should be trying to make all of this in terms of one variable. Let's do it in terms of D since we have M solved for. Replace the M, 19 over 4D plus D. Don't just think about it as and write D. Convert it to something friendly with 19 over 4. Namely, 4 over 4D. Convert as you write, because you anticipate combining these in a second, to 23 over 4D. Now we need to replace the A. So the A, how can we do that? Come back to this equation here and replace the M with 19 over 4D. You'll get A equals 5 times 19 over 4D, again, plus 4 over 4D. That's 95 over 4 plus 4 over 4 is 99 over 4D. Come back and replace. Don't put it here. We'll put it here. Save time. The D's cancel, which is our goal, our plan in the first place. The 4's also cancel. 23 over 99 is really close to 23 over 100. So the answer is 23%. All right, the last problem of this video, the 2017 AMC 10A, problem number 15. Chloe, or A, uh, chooses a real number uniformly. So when you read things like real numbers, start thinking this is rational, irrational, everything, decimals. Uniformly, at random, from the interval 0 to 2017 inclusive. If you don't understand interval notation, try to find a video on it. Uh, the brackets means inclusive, parentheses would mean not including the endpoints. Independently, Laurent chooses a real number uniformly at random from the interval 0 to 4034 inclusive. Right now, your brain should be registering that this number is exactly twice this number. doesn't know how to capitalize on it yet, but you need to recognize it right away. 
what is the probability that Lorentz number is greater than Chloe's number? Well, it basically, we can think of it as a uh, geometric probability on a number line, if you will. If you want to learn more about geometric probability, I recommend the AOPS Intro to Probability book. They have a, a section of one chapter that you can use. Um, okay, so Laurent can either choose a number between 0 and 2017 or 2017 to 4034. Since on a number line, those distances are equal because 2017 is half of 4034, then the chance of Laurent choosing a number in this interval and this interval is equal. So she has a 1 in 2 chance of being in this interval and a 1 in 2 chance of being in this interval. Now, if Laurent is in this interval, then she wins automatically, regardless of what Chloe chooses. It stands to reason that in the other interval, if Laurent chooses from the same interval as Chloe, then by symmetry, half the time Laurent will be right, or bigger, and half the time Chloe will have the larger number. Um, the time that they tie is infinitely small space, and so we don't really care about that. So the chance that Laurent picks a number from this length, this region, is one half times the probability that Laurent wins, given that she chose a number from this, which is also one half. You get a half plus a fourth, three fourths. If you guys like these videos, don't forget to subscribe down below. I'll see you in the next clip.